Loan payment went on. Um, I was uh, browsing the catalogues of uh, one of the local auction rooms. I was living in Leeds at the time, and uh, one of the auction rooms in, in Scarborough. Um, and this concertina came up. It was described as an oversized concertina. <laughs> it's about right. Um, and I got a little bit overexcited in the bidding process and, and ended up winning it. It's a, it's a bass concertina, so a, a standard Anglo, your lowest note is C below middle C. Well, this one has that up on the right hand, and then it goes down. And it goes down a bit more. It's all good Yeah. Um, they were, this one was made in probably about the 1870s. They were designed really for concertina bands, which were mm. all the rage back in the Victorian era, playing sort of brass band repertoire often. And this was sort of the, the tuber of the concertina band, if you like. And so having bought it, I had to work out what am I going to do with it? Because <laughs> I, I can't clone myself and form a concertina band, as much as I would like to. Um, and I was uh, particularly drawn to... Uh, I'm sure many of you know the great Bernard Wrigley, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the base English concertina, and he's kind of made a career over the past, I don't know, what, 40, 50 years of, of playing smut accompanied on the base English concertina. <laughs> so I thought I'd reclaim that for the base <laughs> English concertina. Uh, this is a song uh, from uh, up in Yorkshire, kind of like this concertina, it's kind of what it's like, um, from near Whitby, uh, a song about a tailor who has a little bit too much fun on New Year's Eve, called The Dancing Tailor. <laughs> Oh, 
And his money and his ball. 